TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bell so let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we happen to go live and you miss it, this channel right here is where all the highlights will be from the live. Um, we also got merch out, new merch out. You get me... Uh, we also got the Patreon. This is where things. This is where we watch things we can't watch on YouTube. It's all in here. This is an up-to-date list of everything. You can pause or you can just go to the link provided and check it out. You can check out what's on there and whatnot without paying. Or, you know. And don't forget we got the Discord. It plays a big part on Kick because you can't drop links in the Kick chat. So you got to drop them in the Discord. Uh... I'll be back on Kick Monday. So make sure y'all, you know, get in there. If you have to, if you don't know how, where, where these are, they're in the description of every single video. It's a link called Link Tree. You click it, everything will pop up. Why does American beer taste like water? First of all, yes, it does. <laughs> Second of all, I don't really partake in it. Uh, third of all, I am one. I do want to take. Uh, I haven't tried UK beer, but I've seen some at the British marketplace yesterday. So I might go back and grab American Lager, crisp, light, refreshing. Hams. Mmm. It's as American as baseball and apple pie and Snooky and Abraham Lincoln's beard. And here in America, we sure do like our beer. We're we're ranked second in the world for overall beer consumption, an honor we've earned by tossing back roughly 51 billion pints of suds every single year. And although there are a lot of options to choose from, the style of beer we drink the most by far is the traditional light American lager. Of course, not everyone else in the world loves American beer. We find your American beer is a little like making love in a canoe. It's f***ing close to water. Very well made <laughs> beers. These are very high uh, Monty. quality beers but they're kind of light on, on beer flavor. This is Ray Daniels, founder of the Cicerone Certification Program in Chicago, long time. Oh, from my hometown. Oh, Cicerone. That's, that's gotta be on Cicero. That's a good play on word, words. Brewer and expert beer drinker. And the main reason is because there's not that much malt in these recipes. Yeah. And the Germans have a saying that malt is the soul of beer. And there's not that much malt in these beers. But how did a style of beer that's drinkable and refreshing, yet has no soul, get to be so popular? Five reasons. German immigrants, prohibition, brewing technology, World War II, and the post-war consumer packaged goods economy. But I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Excuse me. Could I get a cool refreshing lager, please? Here is our beer list, categorized okay. by country. Lagers are listed on the left, alphabetically, uh, by sure, variety. Sure, could I, could I, just, of course. Thanks. Okay. Ow. That is how it be. You know what? I don't want to go through all of that. <clears throat> w script though. Paper cut. Why is that? I would say like for most of American history, this was the kind of beer we were drinking, right? Right. right. Well, it, it really has to do with brewing technology and the migration of German speaking immigrants coming to the US. Between 1850 and 1900, million. So this is, Cause I know the UK 100% has better taste in beer than America. I don't even like these IPAs from everywhere else. Like, eh, you can kind of keep those. Give me a good lager, which I know y'all got some good ones over there in the UK. Like, if I if I want to drink some beer, like, what's my go-to man right now? There's a Florida brewed beer it's called Yingling. That's like my go-to right now. Millions of German-speaking immigrants migrated to the United States. Prior to that, British-style ales dominated the beer industry, but the Germans wanted something different. Wanted to make a nice, golden, clear, pale beer, because that was the style of beer in Germany at the time. But American barley, the stuff that grows here in the United States, is different than the barley that grows in Europe. And they couldn't make a clear beer with American six-row barley because it has a higher protein content. 
problem. They were very annoyed. Mm -hmm. and they couldn't get clear beer. I mean, I would be pretty annoyed yeah, if I couldn't yeah, get absolutely. beer. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it didn't look pretty the way it was supposed to. Yeah. So they figured out that if they took a low protein grain like corn or rice mm -hmm. and mixed it into the recipe, that they'd get a lower protein content in the finished beer and the beer would turn out clear. Mm -hmm. So that was the original reason. It was okay. it was not to make it cheap. It was not, you know, anything else, but they wanted a nice, clear, golden beer. The Czech style Pilsner, which is a type of lager, quickly became so that's why it tastes like water. And the beer of choice. Breweries began popping up all over the place, many of which were owned and operated by German immigrants like Adolf Coors, Frederick Miller, Joseph Schlitz, Frederick Pabst Blue Ribbon, full name, and a soap maker. Oh, Blue Ribbon. Man, you go to any like dive bar in Chicago, you can get Blue Ribbon with a shot of Malort for like $6. Malort, for some reason, is the, the liquor of Chicago. I don't know if y'all know this. It tastes so bad, but the Chicagoans, we love it. Not when I say we, I don't mean me. I mean we as Chicago, we love Malort. I think it's disgusting, but pint of ribbon, blue ribbon, with a Malort for six bucks. Come on, bro. I'm I'm drunk off twenty dollars. You can't get that nowhere else. <laughs> Maker named Eberhard Anheuser. The brewing industry in America flourished, and by 1873, First the country brewery. had over 4,000 breweries. However, this golden age of golden mm -hmm. lager would not last long. The boom in the beer industry was accompanied by a boom in other things associated with beer, like public drunkenness and domestic violence. Then something happened in America that set the That's not funny. brewing industry back a few decades. When the 18th Amendment passed in 1919, prohibition in the United States had officially begun. The production, transport, and sale of alcohol became illegal, and the beer industry all but ceased to exist. I don't even know how America let this happen back in the day. Like, I, like I need to, like, I, one thing I do not know is the full story behind prohibition. Maybe I'll look it up, do a video on it one day, but... I'm still a little confused how this even happened. Like, <laughs> the exception of a few industrious entrepreneurs. When Prohibition was finally repealed in 1933, yeah, only a fraction of the beer manufacturers from the late 1800s remained, and that number continued to drop every year. Strict state laws combined with heavy government regulation made it difficult for smaller beer companies to survive, not to mention the fact that home brewing was still illegal. During World War II, grain was rationed in the United States, forcing beer makers to rely more heavily on adjuncts like corn and rice. This slowed the reemergence of smaller breweries, but allowed bigger, established breweries to flourish. After the war ended, America didn't need to ration anymore, and we began to adopt a more liberal approach to consumption. You know, and then the 20th century was pretty much a century of consumer packaged goods in the United States. We had very narrow media outlets. You know, when I was a kid, there were only three TV stations, period. I that, sir sucks what did you feel your day like i'm not okay let me stop you had a great childhood is what that means you no know, ancient history right yeah everything got narrowed down to a very small number of brands with universal distribution throughout the country it was true for soap breakfast cereal uh, coffee was Folgers and Maxwell House. I mean, everything got narrowed down to a very small number of consumer brands, and beer was no different. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, the number of independent breweries dwindled as beer manufacturers merged and companies like Anheuser Busch and Miller continued to grow. By 1978, oh. manufacturers merged and companies like Anheuser Busch and Miller. They got all of these beers under this one umbrella? I used to like Budweiser for a long time as well continued to grow. By 1978, the beer making industry hit a record low with only around 80 breweries operating in the US. America's beer got even more watered down when the big beer companies devised a brilliant strategy to sell more beer. Light beer. I wanna tell you the easy. Like now that I'm an adult, being an adult and maturing is realizing that light beer is fake. It's a plan to get money. It's a money scheme. <laughs> It's not even beer. How do you call the beer? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Originally marketed unsuccessfully as a diet drink, light beers promised the same great taste but with less filling, which basically just encouraged people to drink more. Miller Light and Bud Light's advertising campaigns were hugely successful and further cemented their dominance of the beer industry. Unless you were one of the millions of Americans who enjoyed bland, watery beer, things were looking pretty bleak. But then a miracle happened. 
In 1977, Congress passed a small brewer tax credit, and in 1978, a bill was signed into law that finally made home brewing legal throughout the country. Salute to Jimmy Carter, I guess, right? Into law, not, well, I don't, salute as far as this. Jimmy Carter uh, signed home brewing, one of the other great things Jimmy Carter did. Wow, what a great man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Home brewing became legal, and home brewing really drove the craft brewing movement. It was really tough in the early days because there was no equipment. Nobody was selling supplies uh, to these small breweries. You know, a small brewer might need um, a thousand pounds of malt. And they call up a malt supplier, and they're like, yeah, we'll send you some malt. You know, how many, how many train car loads do you need? I was like, well, how much is the train card? 30,000 pounds. Like, um, can I get a thousand? <laughs> yeah. You know, click. It started slow. That's L business because if I was one of those people that, that they call, man, what? Everybody trying to do it, nobody selling to them? I'm in. <laughs> so I send everybody my way. I got you. Slow at first, but over the years, the number of small craft breweries began to steadily increase. So what we're seeing now, what uh, most uh, people think of as the craft uh, movement, the modern one of the second wave really started in about 2003. There were craft brewers out there who'd been sort of sticking to their knitting and really, you know, cleaning up their game and, and getting things good. A new brewery started being founded and we've had this huge, you know, upsurge of, of breweries. So there, that's 30 years of craft beer yeah. history in a, in a wow. nutshell. No longer limited to the light lagers that Americans had been drinking for over a century, brewers can now experiment with a variety of styles and flavors, creating new recipes and borrowing from old traditions as well. In 2015, the number of breweries in America reached an all-time high at 4,269, surpassing pre-prohibition numbers. Of course, at the same time... That's only in 2015? Dang! ...time, after years of mergers and acquisitions, the world's five biggest beer companies now control over 50% of the world's beer market. Although big beer continues... That says a lot. Right now, if you come up with a good beer right now, a good beer recipe, you can get bought out and keep a small percentage and make money for the rest of your life, rest of your kid's life, your kid's kid's life, and so forth right now. You can still do that with beer. Gave myself an idea. Tough. Needs to dominate, it does not seem to be slowing down craft beer. And we have more options for beer consumption than ever before. This is truly a good time to have- Oh, that's Guinness. ...a beer, if you're of age, and you drink responsibly. Stay in school. So what do you think? Do you enjoy craft brews? Do you think we're in a beer bubble that will explode at any time? Or are you content to stick with the good old mass-produced American light lager? I don't like light beer, so... I kind of just like it all. Let us know in the comments. Last week we did a video all about the centennial bulb, done? the bulb that lasted over a hundred years about the light bulb. Me, the f of Imperial... We are done. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, let me know what your favorite beer is down in the comments, especially from the UK, because I found some beers that I do want to try, but I don't know which one to get. So let me know, man. I'm gone.